Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about interpolation and how to use interpolation in Blender's Grease Pencil tool. So I'm going to start a new file, 2D animation. I'm going to just go right here, nice new blank canvas, and I'm going to draw a shape. I'm going to jump out here to, let's say, frame 30 now, let's make it an even 40, and I'm going to draw a new shape. <clears throat> And so now I have a 2D animation using the grease pencil and two shapes. Uh, what if I wanted this one to become this one over time? Using standard frame by frame animation, I now have 39 frames that I need to hand draw between these two that's going to make this turn into this over time. That would end up looking good. It would end up looking smooth, but it would be a lot of work. That's 39 new drawings. Blender can do this for you. And that's what it means to interpolate something. So Blender is going to figure out what this shape needs to do every single frame to end up turning into this by the time we get to frame 40. And it's going to draw all those in-between frames for us. So all you need to do to do that is have two normal keyframes with two drawings on it. Put your mouse somewhere in the middle. Make sure you're in draw mode or edit mode. They both will work. I'll show you edit mode in a second. And under the draw menu, you're going to find interpolate sequence. And if you do that, notice we have a lot more keyframe dots down here. And our animation just changed because we're looking at a middle frame. If you scrub back and forth, you can see that Blender just figured out every drawing that you would need to make to get from one shape to the other shape. And you didn't have to draw them. So that's one way. Let's go out here a little bit more. Um, I'm thinking right around frame 80. And what I want to do is I want to duplicate this last shape. And I just want to work with that over time. I don't want to have to redraw the shape. Um, so what I'm going to do is with that keyframe selected, I think it's selected. Hello? Yeah, maybe. Why isn't it turning orange? I want to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Um, <clears throat> With my mouse in the dope sheet down here, I'm just going to press Shift D and duplicate that frame and move it out. I'll go to frame 80 right there. And so now what I've got is that same keyframe kind of holding its position over time. And now you can use Sculpt or Edit to change that shape without having to draw something new. So I'm going to go into Edit Mode for now. And I'm going to take this shape and select it. And I'm just going to rotate it like that. And maybe I'm going to scale it too. And, oh, and I was on frame 79. I did not mean to do that. I don't know how that got moved. Let's undo those two things. Because I want to be on frame 80, which is where my keyframe is. So now I'm going to select that. And notice the whole thing got selected, by the way, just by grabbing a little piece of it. That's because your selection mode's up here. I'm on um, stroke select mode. So anytime I touch a stroke, it'll select the whole stroke. You can go to vertex select, which is my other favorite, and just select portions of the stroke. Uh, but for what I'm trying to do, one stroke will be fine. So now I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to scale it. And now you can see we have the original here and we have the rotated and scaled version there. I'm going to go in between. And because I'm in edit mode, my menu choices have changed. If I jump back to draw for a second and just remind you, in draw mode, I had view and draw. In edit mode, I have view, select, grease, pencil, stroke, and point. The interpolate command is under the grease pencil menu. So I go there. And I go down to interpolate sequence and Blender just drew all those in between frames for me to scale and rotate that over time. So let me change my animation. My animation is now 80 frames long. Let me just change this to 80 and play this so it will loop for you so you can see what's going on. There's the entire animation using Blender's interpolate. I did not have to draw 80 individual frames to make this happen. So the interpolate tool can be a, or the interpolation command can be a great time saver. I wanted to clarify that because there is an interpolate tool and it works differently. So let's play with that now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out here, let's say frame 110, and I'm going to go back to my uh, my draw mode, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn this shape into what might be perceived as a bird, if you can see that off in the distance, see the arching wings there. Um, and so now I'm going to use the interpolate command. And as long as you're in draw mode, if you look down at the bottom of your toolbar on the left, um, if you don't have that toolbar, 
press T on your keyboard. It makes the toolbar appear and disappear. I can click on interpolate, choose an exact keyframe. It's very important that you choose the keyframe that you want this to be on um, because you're not going to create a whole bunch of keyframes this time. You're going to create one. So with the interpolate tool selected, I can click anywhere on the screen and drag my mouse left and right. And you can see that my line is changing into that bird shape that I want. And what's going to happen is wherever I let go of the mouse, that's the image I'm going to have left. So if I let go now, that's the image I'm going to have on frame 86. If I move my mouse a little bit more, I'm going to have that image on line 86. So it's doing the full calculation of what's going to happen to your drawing, but letting you choose which stage you want to appear there. So now if I jump out here and just click and drag again, I can go there and then maybe there and then maybe there. And so what I've just done is I've created an animation with a few keyframes in it. So it's more like stop motion. So oh, my animation stops at 80 because I told it to. I got to extend that. Let's go out to 110. Ah, that's 101. Okay. Let's play this whole thing nice and smooth. Every frame is animated and then kind of stop motion. We're only animating every few frames. And that may be something that you want to do. It can be very handy as well. It can save you some time in drawing individual frames. Um, and if you come back later and decide you want to smooth this out, if you want to add the interpolation in between, uh, keep in mind that each of these would need to be converted into a normal keyframe before you could do that. Um, or at least the two you want to work with. So like if I pick this one, and I can right click and choose keyframe type or notice the shortcut there is just the letter R on your keyboard. I can choose to turn that into a normal keyframe. Right now it's a breakdown keyframe. It's an automatically generated one. So if that was a normal one and this was a normal one, now I can put my mouse in between those and I can use the interpolate command. So draw, interpolate, and now we've got smooth movement between these two keyframes, but the others are still jumpy. So that's how you can make that happen. And there's that new animation. And that's what interpolate is in Blender. And that's how you can use it in draw mode, in edit mode, um, and using the interpolate tool by itself. So I hope that helps you do some nice 2D animation and saves you a little bit of drawing time. Um, so you don't have to draw all those individual keyframes every time. Good luck.